Hi there. In this video, I want to talk about workflow preferences for output images. So if you're working with bitmap images or vector based graphics or a combination of both, there's quite a few things to be aware of for optimizing the output. I'm going to start on this page and feel free to pause the video and read what I've written. I'm starting here because this is a culmination of my understanding of visual media workflow. And one of the tentative conclusions that I came to was that I want to reach an imperceptible fidelity for the intended viewing distance with the least amount of effort and time. So you start to consider the output intent and the intended viewing distance to manage media size, quality of output and the speed of the workflow. Generally, what I've found is that I try to keep um, original versions of whatever the components are of, of, the, of the final output. So for example, I might have the original scans, um, photos, or it might even be like renders, the original JPEG renders. And then I might also have the Illustrator line work as well as a separate file. They can all be combined and put back into InDesign before you export it for final. So let's say you're in InDesign and you've brought together all of your original stuff have it on the layers that you want. So for example, here I've put the text um, in InDesign, but the rest, this is an Illustrator file at the back. It has the line work and the backing ray trace render. But I want to export this for viewing now. So I can either export it as a raster or a PDF. A while ago, I wrote this as an email to my subject coordinator, and I didn't know what to do because they placed a 20 megabyte limit for the submission, and I had 28 A3 pages. So I was trying to figure out how to get those 28 A3 pages into a format that was under 20 megabytes, but that would also retain the intent of the work. And that led me to my current workflow. I'll pause it here if you want to read it. I know there's a lot of text, but you may learn what I'm talking about if you read this. Ideally, we would have everything vectorized all the time because it's lossless. You can zoom into any level and it will always be sharp. You can also print at any scale and it will always be sharp. It can also be smaller than a bitmap image because it only has information for curves and fills, whereas raster graphics have the background as well. So for example, here it'll have information for the white pixels, but this vector image only has curves. So this image is a vector PDF. I opened it in Acrobat and I also opened it in Opera Browser, but they view slightly differently. And both of them view very differently to the original Illustrator file. So for example here, I believe there's a bit more anti-aliasing because you can see that the jagged edges have been smoothed, whereas here you can see more jagged edges. But also in Acrobat, for some reason by default, the lines appear thick. To turn that off, you have to go to Preferences and uncheck Enhance Thin Lines. And now you can see the lines appear fine and they appear very similar, if not identical, to what you see in Illustrator. So for example, if you have an assessor and they don't use Acrobat, they may be using a web browser, and they may be viewing things not as you want them to be viewed, um, and they may not have unchecked the enhanced in lines if they are using Acrobat. I also did a print comparison on paper between Opera Browser and Acrobat with enhanced thin lines checked and unchecked, and they all came out the same, so, the, so it only appears different on screen. Again, to recommend keeping everything vector if you're gonna be printing on paper, because you get the crispest results possible. My understanding is that the vectors are lossless and they stay that way right up until that last conversion process where the driver takes that vector information and converts it to something the printer can use for its printing process. This bypasses the driver having to represent the soft edges of a pixelated image. The biggest pitfall for viewing vectors is its speed. So for example, let's say you submit your work to your assessor and they have a pretty unpowerful computer. And they're trying to zoom in and out and they get this type of thing happening where the page needs to refresh and when you zoom in you get this lag so it's not a good viewing experience for the assessor and all of this affects the perception of your work in my opinion so for example the output which i did submit is this it's a rasterized version 600 dpi and i don't need it to be that high resolution but i wanted to make sure that every one of the details could be seen um, it does look a bit different the colors a little bit different um, and Obviously the lines aren't as crisp, but it is a better viewing experience and your assessor won't be so distracted by the lag. And if you view it at 300 DPI, which is the traditional output resolution, that is much, much smoother as well. So you can scroll in and out and everyone will be happy. 
Aside from the speed, the other big advantage of using raster is it looks consistent across different viewing platforms. So for example here, I've got it open in Opera and I've got it open in Chrome as well. I've got it open up in, I've got it open in Firefox here and I've also got it opened up in Windows Picture Viewer and they all look pretty much the same. Another advantage of this is, let's say you've submitted your portfolio to a potential employer. They may be downloading a PDF or they may be downloading the image and they can open up in any of their viewers and they'll see it as you intended in a quick manner. So back to this diagram that I've got here, this little block here, which is like my tentative workflow conclusions. I always try to keep the original quality components so that I can access them later and from InDesign when they're compiled as you want them, you can create both a vector version for printing and a raster version for screen viewing or portfolio sharing purposes. So let's say you want to export for print. I'm in InDesign here and I have my images ready to go. When you're printing a combination with raster in the background and vectors or fills on top of the edges, the good thing is that even if you have a more pixelated image, so if it's lower resolution or if it's higher compression, the vector outlines will cover that up. So when you print it, it will still look crisp. So going back to this document, you can see that a combination of a, a reasonable raster with the vectors on the outside can give you a good printing outcome. So I'm going to go File, Export, Save as a Print PDF. And I'm going to choose a preset which I've made, which is above 300 DPI down to 300 DPI and it's going to use high quality images, not maximum. And I press export and it will do its thing. When I open it and zoom in, you can see the stuttering issues that I encounter. But let's say I zoom right in. You can see that even though we've got this blurry background of the pixelated edges, when you print it, those edges will appear crisp, so you don't have to worry too much. The thing to note here is that the file size doesn't matter too much if you're printing, because they don't have to download a huge file. All of that data has been converted into ink on the paper. So long as the computer, which is taking that file and sending it to the printer can handle your file, then you're all fine with a large file. But for online submission and for portfolio purposes, then you have to start thinking about the maximum file size for each page. So I'm in InDesign and instead of exporting vector plus raster for print, I'm now just going to export raster for screen viewing, submission or portfolio purposes. The way I do that is to first go to view, display performance and make sure it's on high quality display and then also clear object level display settings. That means that each page in your InDesign project will be shown at its highest quality. Then I'm gonna to go to File, Export, and I've already done this before, but basically you choose JPEG from the drop down instead of PDF. You go Save, then you choose the pages you want. And the main thing here is to export at a quality which is much higher than you will be submitting. Maximum quality, high DPI, and press Export. Now I've got these two 600 DPI JPEGs here. I'm gonna open that folder in Bridge, right click, browse in Adobe Bridge, and it comes up like this. I'm gonna select those two, right click, open in Camera Raw. And once it's opened in Camera Raw, I'm gonna select both of them, or select all of the pages that you have. And then you see this little Save button here, press that. And now you have the Save Options dialog. And the reason that I'm using Bridge is because you can specify exactly how big you want the output file to be without having to do too much trial and error. And you can also specify the length of the long edge. One thing to note here is if you do choose to limit file size to a specific size, it will be choosing between one and 12. You can't go lower than one. So if your output is say 3,320 pixels and you choose a file size of 100 kilobytes, it may not do 100 kilobytes. It'll be using the highest compression, so the worst quality, at 3,320 pixels long edge. So as you can see, I've just exported those two at 100 kilobytes, but the minimum size is 230 or 262 because it used level one compression. It can't go any lower than level one. If you did need it at 100 kilobytes, you could 
do the save as and then just start to shorten the long edge and then you will get down to 100. But at 237 kilobytes, you can see that this is pretty unusable. Lots and lots of compression artifacts, all of the detail had been lost. So I had 28 pages and I needed them to be under 20 megabytes. In the end, that was not possible. I emailed the tutor and said, look, this is not working. And they said, okay, fine, you can have more than that. But if you were in a competition where they had a strict limit, you want to get the most out of those 20 megabytes. This is where Adobe Bridge works the best. So I'm gonna select all of these and then hit the save button there. And I'm gonna choose an output of 700 kilobytes, roughly. And I'm gonna have a long edge of 3500. And I'm gonna press save and wait for it to do its thing. And you can see that because it uses multi-cores, it does it very quickly. So now I open this folder and you can see that they are roughly totaling up to 17.6 megabytes, which is under the 20 megabytes. But if I right click and go to combine files in Acrobat, because they usually require a PDF submission and then press combine. And I'm gonna save this out and you'll see that it adds about 10% to the file size. Now I have saved that combined PDF as a single PDF and it's 20.8 megabytes instead of just the 17.6 megabytes of the individual JPEGs. So again, I actually need to go back and bring that size down. So I'm gonna do it once more, but at a lower desired kilobyte size. So that'll choose the compression level that's the best. I'm gonna choose 660 kilobytes. So let's take those new files and see their size. 16.5 megabytes, right click, combine files in Acrobat, combine, press save. And you'll see, finally we have a, a PDF which is submission worthy, it's 19.7 megabytes. If I open it though, you'll see that it's, it's limited quality, but it might just do the job. So let's go down to some of those sections. Okay, here are the sections. And you can see that a lot of the detail has been lost, but it might be good enough for your submission. Yeah, not too bad, but quite disappointing. And remember, you would not have been able to submit a vector like this. It was just too many curves. The file would have been way too big. So in the end, I asked my tutor if I could have a high size file format. They said, yes, for this submission, given the, the amount of work you put in, sure, go ahead. So that's it for this video. Um, it's been quite a while in the making, trying to figure out what to say and what not to say. Uh, there's lots of different parts which I've learned over the years, and this is just a tentative workflow. Um, lots of different problems that I've encountered trying to get the right file sizes, figuring out whether it should be vector or raster, and at the moment, I think for Screen viewing, when a lot of us are stuck in COVID, um, screen viewing should have raster output and, unless you're printing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends. Cheers.